What is going on guys? Nick here back with another video. 2022 was a pretty rough year in the stock market. Hedge funds had some of their worst losses on record. Retail traders got absolutely crushed. Some of them losing 75 to 80% of their entire account, but it wasn't a rough year for everybody. See, if you were a member of Congress and you traded stock in 2022, there's actually a better chance than not that you not only beat the stock market, but you actually turned a profit. And while it does seem incredibly suspicious that all of these publicly elected officials who have access to all kinds of insider and non-public information were somehow able to beat the stock market as a whole. The problem is that insider trading is extremely difficult to prove. But I think that it's a pretty easy argument to make that even the appearance of these publicly elected officials who are put in office, again with access to a lot of information that we don't have access to, and are trading just as sharply as hedge fund managers who have all kinds of billions of dollars worth of resources behind them and decades worth of experience, it just seems highly unlikely that these members of Congress are somehow able to trade so effectively without using some of this information and insight at the very least that they've gained from their public office. Now obviously this isn't a new criticism, there was actually a law that was passed in 2012 called the Stock Act. Specifically that law prohibits the use of non-public information for private profit which includes insider trading by members of Congress and other government employees. But one of the most important aspects of the law is that it requires Congress to disclose their stock trades within 45 days of the transaction. And this is the very reason why we know that Congress is trading so well. So a Twitter account called Unusual Whales, who regularly reports on large and unusual stock market activity, put out his annual report on Congress and the returns in the stock market last year. Now this report was compiled after going through all of the disclosures and records from Congress, and it certainly highlighted some very problematic and I would say suspicious looking returns. Now if you want to read the report for yourself, I have it linked down in the description. I'll also include a link to a website called Capital Trades, which is a giant database for all the assets that Congress has been trading. It's broken down by all the politicians, the specific trades, the holdings, it even has the date, the total, and if it was filed on time. And if you find any suspicious trades, put them down in the comments below, I'd be pretty interested to see what you guys find. So a couple of the most interesting highlights from the unusual whales report. So while the S&P 500 was down 18% for the year, Democrats did much better on average at just a 1.7% loss, while Republicans averaged a 0.4% profit. But when you separate the trades by chamber, so the House versus the Senate, Senators did much better on average with Republicans gaining almost 6% and Democrats just over 16%, while members of the House pulled off just 3 and 4% returns. Now there are some key differences between these two chambers, which make it seem like time and expertise in Congress improve stock market performance. Those in the House are elected every two years, which means all 435 members are up for election every two years. All of them. Which means that the members of the House typically have been there for a lot less time. It's also a lot bigger than the Senate, with the House having 435 voting members and the Senate having 100. Now the Senate is elected to six year terms and only a third of them are up for election every two years. Which means that the Senate compared to the House has a much more concentrated amount of expertise because there's fewer senators than there are House representatives, and on average, they've been there longer. It doesn't seem that surprising then when we go back and look at the returns that those in the Senate who have more time in Congress and expertise tend to perform better. Now, when we start to look at the timing, it turns out that all of these trades weren't just placed by luck. They weren't just placed when the stock market was low and the stock market came back up and they ended up outperforming the market. If you match the times those trades were placed and compare them to the returns of the S&P 500, well, Congress was still able to beat the stock market. And keep in mind that this sample was based on 12,700 total trades. So this wasn't just a small sample size of a couple random trades. Okay, so when it comes to Congress the stock market, the first person that everybody always wants to know about is how did Nancy Pelosi do? Well, <clears throat> Sorry to disappoint, but Nancy actually did not have a great year in the stock market. She actually slightly underperformed, losing about 20%, while the S&P 500 lost 18.2%. And if I'm being completely honest, I actually think that some of the criticism around the Pelosi's and their stock trades has been a little bit unfair. Because if you go and look at the stocks that they're trading, these aren't some stocks that you need some type of deep insider knowledge to be able to navigate. These are pretty much the stocks that most retail traders are trading, which is also 
also probably why the Pelosi's didn't do that well this year. But that doesn't mean that the rest of the congressional traders didn't get here just by luck and circumstance, because I found some pretty suspicious looking trades, so let's get to that stuff. So our first name on the list is Senator Tommy Tupperville. This guy made 352 trades during 2022, so he was super active last year. Now one of the most interesting things that Senator Tupperville has been trading is something that I don't know that I've really met anybody who actually trades this particular asset. He traded it 27 times in 2022, and the interesting asset was cattle futures. Yeah, cattle futures. I, who trades cattle futures? But what started to make this really suspicious looking to me is that when you go look at the committees that Senator Tuberville is assigned to, one of them is the Agricultural, Nutrition, and Forestry Subcommittee for Commodities, Risk Management, and Trade. The literal subcommittee responsible for looking into all the agricultural issues and other things surrounding the specific things that make cattle more and less expensive. Now I'm not saying that these trades were definitely based on insider information. We don't have any information or evidence to show that for sure. But what we do know is that Senator Tupperville has access to unique insider information that none of us have access to, and that he trades a relatively uncommon asset in cattle futures that just so happens to be influenced by this information. Whew, okay, next one on the list. Former chair of the Democratic National Committee, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Now, Debbie Wasserman Schultz trade stuck out to me because in the report, she's actually listed as the second most profitable trader in Congress with a whopping 50.8% return which is a massive return, especially considering that the average retail trader was down about 30% for the year. Now the trades on their face weren't the sketchiest that I found at first. However, what did strike me as really odd and worth looking into is that it wasn't Debbie Wasserman Schultz actually placing all of these trades for her. These disclosures show they were actually all of her kids trading the stock. And after I did some digging, I can tell that she has three kids and they all appear to be in their mid to early 20s. But what did the kids trade? Well, not the typical stuff that I see a lot of 20 year olds trading. On the list was Lionsgate Research, Patterson, UTI Energy, Quantum Corp, MCOR, Westfall Technologies, and some energy sector index funds. Now I don't think that the energy stocks were the strangest things for a 20 year old to be trading, but what became really strange to me was when exactly these trades were placed. And the majority of the energy trades were placed in January, which is about a month before Russia was to invade Ukraine, causing a massive global oil supply shock and sending energy prices through the roof. Again, I have no evidence to show that this was clearly insider trading, that these kids would have gotten some kind of information or insight from their mom. We would definitely need some further evidence to prove that, but it's extremely sharply timed, something that I think is probably pretty unusual for a 20 year old to have pulled off. Now I'm sure if that was the end of it, you would say that's kind of weird. They timed oil at the perfect time, but that's it. That's not really that crazy to me. But again, just like Senator Tuberville, Debbie Wasserman Schultz sits on the subcommittee for energy, water development, and related energies. She's not just a regular member, she's the vice chair of the Appropriations Committee, the committee responsible for deciding the budget for the Department of Energy. And even if it's not insider trading, this is just uncomfortable to me that again it has a really heavy appearance of some type of conflict of interest going on. Okay, now I've saved the biggest winner of 2023 for last. That would be Representative Pat Fallon. Pat absolutely crushed it in 2022 with a massive 51% return. Now Pat was a very inactive trader last year. In fact, he only traded one stock in 2022, but that's all he needed to absolutely demolish the market. But before I say exactly which stock it is, I'm gonna start at the end of the story to make this make a little bit more sense. So Pat Fallon was interviewed on conservative news network, Newsmax in December about Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. In it, he called Elon's purchase one of the best $44 billion ever spent. And he said it was unfair that Twitter was biasing the public by placing their thumb on the scale of public discourse and that he personally was shadow banned for a decade or more and that Elon had confirmed those suspicions were true. Now this video isn't about all of the politics and uh, Twitter and all of that mess. That is for a completely separate video that we are definitely not gonna talk about today. But I want you to just imagine for a second, no matter what you believe, that you're in Pat Fallon's shoes and you have his particular opinions. You believe that Twitter has shadow banned you, that they're out here stacking the chips against you and all of your colleagues and everything that you stand for. Well, let me ask you a question. 
why would you go and take up to $200,000 of your own money then and put it all on Twitter stock, this company that you hate? Well, maybe it has something to do with when he placed these particular trades. Because again, the only stock that Pat Fallon purchased in 2022 was Twitter stock, and these purchases came just after Elon had started buying the stock himself. And if you remember, at the time, Elon was saying he was going to go in and change how the company was operating and try to make things less biased against conservatives. So again, maybe it's just a giant coincidence that Representative Fallon started buying Twitter stock at the same time that Elon was amassing shares. Maybe there's some type of like high up connections going on where mega rich billionaires and members of Congress communicate with each other about particular issues and ideas. And somehow the idea that Elon had been buying Twitter stock filled down to Pat Fallon and he started to buy the stock himself that would kind of make a lot of sense to me and again on top of that this was the only thing that he bought stock in in 2022 now again insider trading is something that is extremely difficult to prove for even cases like probably the most famous of them all Martha Stewart she actually wasn't convicted of insider trading and this is even after she told one of her friends isn't it great when you have brokers that tell you things right after she went and sold a whole bunch of stock in some biotech company that was about to fail some type of FDA approval. But instead, Martha was actually charged and sent to jail for obstructing the investigation. Now, looking back through all of these trades, there's not necessarily evidence that there was insider trading at this point. We don't have emails to brokers saying, hey, uh, just so you know, Russia is about to invade Ukraine and cause this massive oil supply shock. Can you uh, go ahead and start buying up a whole bunch of oil stock, which it seems like you basically need to prove to be able to show insider trading. However, the one thing that no matter what evidence we do or don't have, most of them are not from Wall Street. And for some reason, they have performed extremely well in the stock market. Something that I would say looks like a pretty significant statistical edge that most likely came from knowledge from their public position. And this is just a very serious conflict of interest that has to be addressed. Now, fortunately, this is my second take recording this video and in between the first and the second take i actually saw that there's some steps being taken in congress to address this issue but unfortunately it's not about stepping up insider trading investigations it's actually gutting a whole bunch of the rules for the house of representatives to be able to investigate insider trading by members of congress so it should get even easier for them if you are going to run for a publicly held office there are sacrifices that come with that and part of that should be the duty to the public to ensure that we can trust that you're in it for the country and not yourself and if you don't like that, then you probably shouldn't hold the position. And as always, thanks for watching.